I am the spring wind. In the words of the Persian epic poet Ferdowsi, all over Iran is my abode. From the majestic snow-capped Damavand peak to the scorching desert in the heart of Iran. And from the lush woods of the Caspian coast to the azure blue waters of the Persian Gulf. At dawn, when the sun starts its magnificent symphony, I start my journey to the Caspian Green Belt. I make my way through fresh and sprawling roses and spread their sweet fragrance everywhere. Open the window and let the cheerful, invigorating spring come in. I have traveled all over Iran for years and have been more and more bewildered each day by its charms and attractions. In the words of the mystic poet, Atta of Neshabur, the more you traverse this territory, the deeper your bewilderment will be. Oh, a biting wind is heading towards me. 
the last winter cold spell. I get to wrestle with it. With the cold spell defeated, rain clouds shed tears of joy. And the proud plane trees reach their hands up to the sky in prayer. In the words of Rumi, if there is no rain, how shall any tree raise its head in the air? How shall a plane tree open its hands in prayer? Praising the unique and compassionate God has been practiced in Iran for thousands of years. And Zoroastrians? Jews? Christians? And Muslims? have lived alongside each other in peace and harmony for centuries. And I've had the privilege of carrying their hymns of monotheism from their places of worship to distant corners of the country. Bearing in mind the lyrics by the superb Persian poet Hafez, Everyone, sober or besotted, seeks the beloved side. Everywhere, mosque or synagogue, love does reside. Today, it's time for the great congregation of Armenian Christians at and around St. Thaddeus Church in northwestern Iran. The heart of Iran's religious rituals, however, is the holy city of Mashhad. Where the shrine of Imam Reza, the eighth Imam of the Shia Muslims, is located. We are now in southern Khorasan. Here I have been turning windmills for centuries. So the friendly people of this region could make fresh and tasty bread.
But nowadays, I am also turning sophisticated turbines to generate electricity for their convenience. Quite far away, though, the clouds are in exile, and the sky is sending down not showers of rain, but showers of scorching sun rays. Here, the hospitable people of Yazd have built fascinating wind catchers to take me home as their guest. I enter their homes through these wind catchers. Caress the water gently and provide them with cool air <laughs> at no expense. The prudent Iranians living in this region are against the culture of waste. For instance, Water is brought here from distant aquifers through underground canals called canats, so that this source of life is not evaporated or wasted in the very heart of the burning desert. As far as I can remember, the oldest of these canats were made more than 2,000 years ago. all the way from the beginning to the end of some of these canats would make me gasp for breath as they stretch well over 80 kilometers. Today, in addition to canats, modern methods like pressurized and drip irrigation systems are also being utilized. They help produce delicious pomegranates, juicy grapes, and the globally popular and exotic Iranian pistachios for everyone to enjoy. Come fly with me over Iran. An ancient land. A heavenly land. whose bounties are dazzling.
whose people are understanding. Thirsty for fountains of wisdom and insight. Famous for passion, love, and warmth. With a people worthy of recognition, deserving the moment of exaltation. But now, I have a moment full of flight and height. I have a moment full of seeing and sight. Oh, God of the moments of delight, let happiness make our future bright. Sun and heavens are all busy that thou might acquire a bit of bread and eat it in remembrance.